Hey guys, Justice here with TomorrowsFilmmakers.com, the largest online film academy in the world, and today we're talking about cinematic lighting. Now this video is part two in our cinematic trilogy, cinematic composition, cinematic lighting, and cinematic movement. Now lighting is not only the most overlooked aspect of filmmaking, but is also the number one thing that will change everything about your projects. If you can learn lighting, you will up the production value like you have never seen before. And like I said, it's also the most overlooked aspect of filmmaking. I've actually seen filmmakers buy red cameras with no lighting and their footage looks worse than someone with a T5i with great lighting. When people ask me to critique their work or ask me why their shot doesn't look as good as their competition, I can usually tell immediately that they either didn't have any lights or their lighting is really bad. Because of that reason, inside our full course, we have an entire 40 episode in-depth lighting course taught by Josh Osley. Josh not only teaches all about lighting, but we follow along with him as he lights all types of different scenarios with expensive lighting to cheap lighting. And we've been selling our film course successfully for years with an $800 price tag and have had over 4,000 students. But right now we're doing something we have never done before. We are running an insane sale of only $97. Our entire lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 film course for only 97 bucks. And I'm not joking. If you want to take advantage of this crazy deal, you can check out our website in the link below and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com to learn more. But in today's lesson, I want to give you the eight steps that you need to take in order to have cinematic lighting. If you take these eight steps, I promise you, your image will look a thousand times better, even if you just have a cell phone. And to show you just how easy it is to get great lighting, I personally own many aperture lights and I use them for every single project. And in my opinion, aperture lights are some of the absolute best that you can buy. But for this entire episode, everything that you are seeing has been shot with cheap lights that anyone can buy. I'm using the Godox SL150, which is about 240 bucks, and the Godox SL60 watt, which is only about 150 bucks. So I want to take a cheaper light and show you guys that you don't need crazy expensive lights to get cinematic lighting. All you have to do is follow these eight steps and you will be shocked at the difference. Starting off with step number one and is actually one of the most important and also doesn't require any lights and that is to shoot shadow side. Now there are many different names for this, shooting negative fill side, short side, dark side, whatever you want to call it, but the idea of shooting shadow side is that whatever side your light is placed on, your camera needs to be on the other side of the subject. This might seem like something really simple, but you wouldn't believe the difference it makes, and you also wouldn't believe how many people don't do this. And I challenge you, go choose any movie off your shelf and try to find a shot that isn't on the shadow side of the subject. It's really difficult because almost every shot in a movie is on the shadow side. Now the reason they do this is because it gives a much more dramatic feel to the scene, it adds depth to the person's face, and also adds more of a three-dimensional element. It doesn't have to be like a really strong contrast where you can barely see the person's face. It could even be really subtle, like this frame. Even though there's a lot of light on our subject, the key light is coming from the other side of the person's face. If we take these two images, we can clearly see which one looks more cinematic. It's always going to be the one where there is more shadows on the subject's face. When I first started out, most of my filming was done on the key side and it didn't look cinematic whatsoever. All of my interviews were done on the key side and everything that I filmed was done on the same side that the light was on. One major secret that I learned over the years of filming is that if you want that cinematic look in your images and boost the production value of your films, simply move the camera to the other side of the light. With an interview, put the light on the other side. If it's a really simple shot and someone's literally writing on a calendar, step to the other side of the person's face. If you don't have any lights, just put the light source on the other side of the person's face, even if it's just the sun. You aren't going for like a silhouette look, just a cinematic look. Such a simple step can make such a difference in your production value. Step number two is lighting direction. The entire emotion of your project can change just by slightly moving the light in your scene. If you move the light too far up above your subject, you get more dark shadows underneath the eyes and the person looks less trustworthy and more depressed. 
If you put the light too low, you will reverse the shadows on the face and the person will start to look like a villain. To get the most natural looking light on a person's face, you wanna have the light at a 45 degree angle on their face, creating an upside down triangle on the subject's opposite cheek. This is known as Rembrandt lighting, named after the famous painter Rembrandt, who used this in almost all of his portraits. This lighting will keep those shadows on the face, but also give enough lighting on the other side to illuminate the eye and slight cheek definition. You'll also create a slight drop shadow under the chin, and it just looks natural. If you're setting up your lights, remember that the direction of the light is just as important as anything else. If you place the light at the wrong angle or position, too high, too low, it can result in an amateur image or even confuse your audience as to what they should be feeling. Just a slight movement can make such a difference. Step number three is depth. Creating depth and separating your subject from the background is a necessity when filming. You do not want your subject to blend into whatever background they're in. You can create separation by shooting at a lower aperture, bringing your subject away from the background, but you can also add separation by lighting. And one way is with color. Now like it or not, the orange and teal blockbuster look is very popular because of the color contrast. If the skin tones are very warm and orange, what is the opposite of orange on the color wheel? Blue. And blue complements orange. You see this all the time in movies and not just in the Transformer movies. But by putting complementing colors in your films to separate your subject, you're not only going to make your film look more cinematic, but you're gonna add separation from your subject and the background by having two different complementing colors in the same shot. And again, it doesn't have to be blue and teal, it could be any complementing colors. So if you have a very warm light on your subject's face, instead of putting another warm light in the background, put a complementing color, like blue. Find complementing colors to add depth to your image. Another way to separate your subject is to simply have your background darker than your subject. If the background is brighter, it's gonna be much harder for the subject to stand out. Simply bring down the exposure of the background to where the subject is brighter than what is behind him. It doesn't have to be super dark or super bright, but the formula that I use is brighter shirt, darker background, darker shirt, brighter background. You just want your subject to stand out from the background by most of the time being brighter than the background, but sometimes even being darker than the background by creating depth. Number four is motivated lighting. Nothing screams amateur more than unmotivated light. Now this is light that doesn't come from anywhere and just kind of appears in the scene. Motivated lighting means that in the scene, the lighting is coming from something in the room and the audience knows it. If we show a wide shot and there's no windows or anything around, and then when I cut to a close up, there's a bunch of light on our subject, it just doesn't make any sense. Motivated lighting means that the audience knows that the source of the light is coming from something natural. If we have a random light on our subject, it just looks unnatural. But if we simply turn on a lamp next to them, it looks like that key light is coming from the lamp. Even though in reality, the lamp isn't really putting off much light and wouldn't be able to light up our subject's face like this. But by placing some sort of light source visible to the audience to see, we have created natural motivated light. In this scene in Bigger Than Life, this harsh underlighting really does make the tension grow in the scene, but why on earth is there a light in the living room pointed up at them? So make sure you have motivated lighting in your scene. It doesn't have to be difficult, and it also doesn't need to put off any light onto your actual subject. It can be as simple as putting a really small lamp in the background. All you wanna do is make sure the scene looks natural and that the audience knows where the lighting is coming from. In this scene from Silence, when these characters are having a deep conversation, there's a lot of side lighting on their faces. The only problem is that there is only one giant window in the entire room producing any light, and it's behind them. So how do we show motivated lighting? We have one wide shot showing light coming into the room and hitting the side of the wall over here. Once they show that, the side lighting doesn't seem out of place. Imagine if they didn't show that wide angle shot and it was just a giant window producing light into the room, and then we cut to a close up and it's side lighting. It would make no sense. So whenever you're lighting a scene, if there isn't a natural reason for a light to be on the face, create one. Next is background lighting. This is something that many people tend to look over because how important it is to light your subject. 
but if you forget to light your background, your image will not look natural and you run the risk of it looking like a stage play by having all the light on your subject and a completely dark background. And I'm not just talking about interviews. It's important to have some sort of background light for interviews, but in narrative filmmaking as well. Most times this can be achieved simply with just some practical lights. You can add a small lamp to the background if it isn't enough light, maybe add a little bit more light to brighten up a certain area if needed. You can also add some ambient light in the background by either pointing a light into the ceiling, pointing a light into a wall, into a room with lots of diffusion. Just add some sort of life to the background so that it looks natural and doesn't look like the subject was just lit by a stage and they completely forgot about the background. Take any movie or TV show and just imagine how a certain shot would look if there was no light in the background. This shot would be completely black behind our subject if it wasn't for that small light. Same thing with this shot. If it wasn't for those few candles, this shot would look unrealistic and look like it was filmed on a stage somewhere. Adding a few small lights to the background really make a difference. Next is time of day. And for those of you who don't know, the absolute best time of day to shoot is in golden hour. This would be the first hour of light when the sun is coming up and the last hour of light when the sun is going down. If you shoot with the sun directly overhead, no matter what you do, you're going to get an ugly look because the sun is casting harsh shadows under the eyes, and it's the same as putting a light directly above your subject. During golden hour, there is no harsh shadows and the light is much more appealing. Now these three shots were taken at the same day, one at 7 a.m., one at 12 p.m., and the other at 7 p.m. If you were to choose which one looks the best, it would be an easy choice. It would be the first one and the last one. And all I did was shoot at a certain time of day. Personally, during golden hour, I like to put the sun behind my subject and shoot into the sun. This will not only give you a very cinematic look, but will also give you beautiful lens flares. And if you plan accordingly, you can sometimes capture lots of detail in the sky when the sun is starting to go down. Shooting any other time will result in a blown out sky, but choosing to shoot during golden hour will increase the cinematic quality of your films immediately. Next is a catch light or an eye light. And this is the reflection of the source of light in your subject's eyes. Now, most people don't really think about this, but a catch light or an eye light gives your subject life. It gives them a soul. It makes them feel alive. They even put white spots in the eye of an animated character to make them feel alive. Yet those older animations that don't have that white spot feel dead and lifeless and like a shark. Some filmmakers have actually used this to communicate life and communicate death. In King Kong, when Kong dies at the top of the Empire State Building, that eye light fades away. Now this wouldn't happen in real life, but like I said, the eye light is what makes people feel alive. So whenever they remove that, you know as the audience that he's dead. In The Grey, when Liam Neeson finds himself surrounded by wolves, there is no light in his eyes because he's accepting his fate. But when he decides to fight to the death, that eye light comes back. Life in the fight for survival has been given back to him and communicated to the audience by having a reflection in his eye. With all that being said, just make sure that when you're lighting your subject, you can see that eye light. And if you can't, try moving the light around just a little bit to get that slight reflection. And finally, step number eight is texture. Now, like it or not, fog and haze completely change lighting. One shot might look okay, but adding just a little bit of haze and a little bit of fog, and it looks like you've just purchased thousands of dollars worth of lights and maybe even upgraded your camera. And that's what I love about fog. It's something so simple, yet can completely change your image. And at the same time, nobody is using it. It doesn't make sense. Now, one little trick that I learned with haze that's amazing is that if you're wanting to get fog outside, it's really difficult and it's really expensive. But not if you use an insect fogger. On Amazon, you can buy these foggers that are meant to repel insects. What you're supposed to do is put insect repellent in it and then spray a giant mist on everything to kill a bunch of bugs. Well, instead, if you use mineral oil or fog juice, it turns an insect repellent into an incredible outdoor fog machine. 
Now I would never use this indoors because it's just way too powerful, but outside scenes now look incredible with a simple bug repellent. And of course, I'll have all the links to these in the description below. So now that we know the eight steps, let's take all of these steps and put them together to make one beautiful cinematic shot. Now, here is our scene. We have our subject sitting in a chair playing the cello. And if we add a light to our subject, it looks fine. I mean, it's fine, it's passable. And this is where many filmmakers would actually stop. But let's take these steps and I'll show you the difference. Our first step is shooting shadow side. Now the light right now is on the key side of our subject's face. So we need to move the light to the other side of his face, which puts us on the shadow side. Number two is lighting direction. As you can see, even though we're on the shadow side, it's still pretty frontal lighting. So let's move the light to a 45 degree angle to get that Rembrandt lighting on our subject's face and add more shadows. Three, four, and five is motivated lighting, backlight, and depth. And I placed all of these together because each one is kind of necessary for the other. First, we need to motivate our key light. So let's simply take a lamp and place it on the same side of our subject and on the same side of our key light. Now the key light is motivated by the lamp in the back. This is also lighting up our background a little bit as well and separating our subject. Next is the background. And even though the lamp is helping a little bit, I do want something on the other side. So we're actually gonna turn on the fireplace over here. And even though it isn't really giving off much light at all, it's adding some interesting element to the background. And not only is it an interesting element, but it's also adding some depth by creating a color contrast. But let's add even more color contrast though by motivating some light from the fire. We're gonna add an orange light to the right side of our subject to look like it's coming from the fire. And again, not only is this light motivated by the fire, but it gives us a really great contrast from the LED key light on our subject's face. And continuing with the background, I really don't like this random door here and I also don't like the dark window. So we're gonna add another light outside of the window shining inward. This brightens up the background, separates our subject, and also adds some cool texture from the blinds to the left side of the frame. And then finally, let's add some haze. And not only does it soften the overall look of the entire image, but look what it does to the window. Amazing. The first image we did doesn't look horrible because our subject is lit well and many filmmakers would probably be satisfied with this, but by taking these eight steps, you can change an acceptable image into a cinematic image, all by using cheap lights and a $30 fog machine from Amazon. So thanks again for watching. If you'd like to learn every single aspect of filmmaking, be sure to check out our website at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content on every single filmmaking subject that you can imagine. And if you wanna go into the production side with weddings, real estate, music videos, commercials, we teach all about that. And if you wanna go into more of the narrative side with directing, storyboarding, acting, we teach all of that as well. And like I said at the beginning, we have been successfully selling this course with an $800 price tag for years, but for a limited time, we are offering it to you guys for only $97. And I'm not even joking. Our award-winning $800 online film course is only 97 bucks. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to click subscribe because we're gonna be posting videos just like this continuously. And if you'd like to learn more, click the link in the description below and learn all the skills that you need to succeed.